This cassette tape contains embarrassing audio recordings from when we were 10 years old. I'm Ashton. And I'm Caddy. And, and we're, we're from Brownsville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning! Today's episode is brought to you by Catula's, the guys with the goods. If you have liked any of the products that we have showboated, and we know you have, or showcased on this program, I'm calling it now, uh, or anything you see at Catula's.com, you need to go to the link in the description to sign up for email deals, exclusive email deals and special promos, deals you can only get on the email sign up link in the description. In yesterday's episode, we reminisced about all of the greatness that was, and in some people's minds, it turns out, still is, VHS tapes. But, you know, we've decided to go a step farther, or further, or further, and talk about an even smaller version of a tape that only contains audio. And here's an example right here. This is one that we kept from our childhood, and we're going to play it in a second. But before we play it... It, let's I, reminisce. Let's reminisce. I moved to North Carolina in 1984, a couple months after moving there, or like a month after moving there, met Link, you know, in the first day of first grade. Mm -hmm. But before I met Link, because I, I moved in the summertime, Yes. I met my neighbor, Jeremy Fisher, older kid. You know, my brother's three years older than me, and he was one year older than my brother, so four-year difference. You know, I'm like five years old. This is a nine-year-old. This is a that's man good, of the world. That's good math, right? This nine-year-old knew everything about everything. And this nine-year-old Jeremy Fisher was listening to gangster rap at that time. That's not appropriate. No, it wasn't appropriate. It wasn't appropriate to then share it with a five-year-old and a, <laughs> with an eight-year-old, my brother. We're not talking We're not talking like MC Hammer, which is just that's nowhere near gangster rap. We're talking well, NW, 19, NWA. What, did NWA have an album in 84? That was too early. I don't know, but it was some, if it wasn't that, it was something. It like, was inappropriate music with foul language, and pe what a, not, not even peppered throughout. It was just it was like non-foul language is what was peppered throughout. Right? Yeah, it was pretty foul throughout. So we, I go over to his house, and he's and he's playing this tape, this this rap tape that has all these cuss words, uh -huh. which, but you know, the funny thing is, it didn't have cuss words because. Every couple of seconds on this gangster rap tape, there would be a beep, beep. What? But it was like the whole, it wasn't like it was the Walmart version where they like take out the cuss word or they reverse it or whatever. Right. It was like the tape stopped and there was a beep. And it sounded a lot like a person, like a nine year old person saying <laughs> beep. Really? But he was really good at it and he was like, listen, y'all. I never met Jeremy Fisher, by the way. Well, you missed out on I, a, I never a, met great, him. a great moment. Uh, but he had taken this cassette tape, and he had discovered that if he took little balls of paper, put them in his mouth, made a spitball, and then stuck it down into the two little holes at the top of a tape, he yeah. could record over like a studio tape, like a tape that you buy from the store, and he could go through, and he would wait until the cuss word, and he would pause, and then he would take and press record, and he would go, beep, and then he would hit pause again, and he beeped out all the curse words so that the little five-year-old could listen to it. That is great. And did he sell these like on the black market? He should have. He's a genius. This, yeah. this guy was pretty inventive. You would never have learned that if it weren't for Jeremy Fisher. He now probably works for Walmart in the in the clean the clean tracks that they create of all the the bad rappers. Right. So I, I come over to Rhett's house, and now I, I'm an only child, so I was very True. insulated. I didn't have any Jeremy Fishers or really any friends. So what I would do is. And I didn't have a television in my room. When you were back when we were kids, oh yeah. Our parents did have enough sense to not put televisions in our rooms. They just let NWA and gangster rap leak in through neighbors. We didn't have televisions. We had little jam boxes. So what I would do with my cassette tapes is I would buy the ones that you were supposed to record over, and they already you didn't have to make spitballs. They were just in there. See, these are kind of filled in at the top. Ready to record. And uh, there was this whole art to listening to the radio and then finding your favorite song. Ooh, the Beach Boys Kokomo is coming on. <laughs> I'm going to record that. And then, you know, if the DJ was talking over the intro to the song or if, as, the, as the song was kind of fading out, 
Way down in Kokomo, Aruba. And thank you for listening to G105. If yeah. that comes on, you're like, ah, oh, abort the recording. Yeah, it ruined it. It ruined it. You had to start over. And then the next night, you'd listen to the hot 10 at 10, and you'd have to hit record at the right time, and then you'd have to hit stop recording at the right time to get the most pristine track. And you knew what song you wanted. Like if it was Beach Boys Kokomo, which was a, which was a hit. Oh, yeah. That's, that's actually on this tape here. Kokomo. You, you were like, that's definitely going to be in the top three. But you didn't know. You were, you were just... For like an hour, right. for, yeah. from 10 to 11, you were sitting there like ready to go. And it was like, I got to pee really bad, but I can't get up because Kokomo might come on. Hot 10 at 10. Don't worry, be happy. But then I go to Rhett's house and I realized that, you know, courtesy of Jeremy Fisher, he's realized how to not have to buy tapes, but just use the ones that he doesn't want anymore. Like, this is the sounds of Halloween. And if you see on the top, I didn't make spitballs. I just took some... A sticker and put over the end. That was actually a better method. You could sit in your room and you can make entertainment for yourself. We didn't have video cameras. We had we had audio recording devices. So we would just sit up there. I mean, first of all, I'm I'm upset that we've only found one surviving recording, which yeah. is sufficiently embarrassing, as you will learn very quickly. But we would sit up there. We made all kinds of things. This is like this tape and other tapes like it sort of represent the beginning of our creative collaboration, mm -hmm. getting together finding some way to capture a moment, albeit this one does not show a lot of promise that, about anything. I would mm -hmm. be scared if I, if I found our, our sons recorded something that was along these lines, I would, like have, I would sit down and I would talk to them and like try to get their heads straight. Or at least g give them advice on how to improve and not be so silly. Yeah, we were just so silly. It's embarrassing. So we're going we're gonna to play this. That's what this show's about. Embarrassing ourselves yeah. for the sake of your entertainment. Now, on this tape I've written... Favorite songs, past, like they were recorded in the past. But then you marked over favorite songs and it just, it just says past. Because I guess they stopped being my favorite songs after a while, but they were always recorded in the past. Yep. I think I got a little of uh, Tone Loke's Funky Cold Medina and we, on the and end of we this. Don't, we don't edit uh, Good Mythical Morning very often, but this is a pretty long thing. We're just going to play it. We reserve the right to edit, not to protect our reputation, but to protect your experience because it was pretty long. So we were listening to Tone, tone Low. Yeah, I was. The last thing. And then I hit stop. Hello, my name is Link Neal, reporting for CBS News. <laughs> this morning. Today, I, I will interview a Chinese monk from the monk house of Monk. Very politically Mr. correct. Mr. Monk, why, what made you decide to be a monk? Apparently, monks are mute. No comment. That's what we thought. <laughs> Before the internet. What is the best thing about being a monk? You didn't, you didn't have a prominent role in this. <laughs> no comment. I don't know if I was well, even there. do you have any last you remarks? Do you have any last remarks? I was 10 years old and very silly. I guess not. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Link. It's still me. No. Yeah, I mean... Uh, now, I, I will to, interview Minnie Pearl. Minnie Pearl, why do you wear that? Wow. Well, it wasn't I high enough. I just like to be a country girl. And work on the farm, and milk the cows, and ride the horses. I just like to do everything. Ride the horses. Well, any last remarks? That's my go-to well, line. I just want to tell everybody it's real fun milking the cows. Can you pause it? Thank you, Minnie Pearl. Okay, I mean, just, it, it, it was 1988, and we, this is how backwards, we were already backwards, but this is how backwards we were. We we were making jokes about Minnie Pearl, yeah, who, was, we, who was popular in like the, in like 1961. Right, right. Yeah, no, yeah, Minnie Pearl was on Hee Haw, which was. <laughs> and a, that, that, she was our inspiration. I don't know what, I, my grandparents. We were so it. isolated. My, <laughs> my grandparents loved Hee Haw. And they love Minnie Pearl, and that's the first thing that came into my mind, and you just went with it. You were like, I'm going to interview you. You should be Minnie Pearl. Okay. But let, let, let's see. Minnie Pearl! Pearl! Let's see. Who do we choose to interview next? To you, Ted. Thank you, Dan. I am Ted Koppel, reporting for CNN. No, that's not right. He didn't work for CNN ever. Mm -mm. I am interviewing... Richard Petty. Pause it. Okay, we're in North Carolina. Richard Remember? Petty. So now we're going to the other 
cultural icon that we could identify with. <laughs> Richard Petty. Na- famous NASCAR racer. Just, with- just keep playing. <laughs> After I crack myself up. Because you're so funny. Excuse me. Richard Petty? <laughs> what did you do last summer? What did you do last summer? Well, I Listen. just raced a lot. <laughs> and then I start going into my, I'm riffing here. I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't know that. Thank you. I, mean, I didn't know that. Comedic genius. I didn't know that, Mommy. I'm laughing Thank at you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, you hubble pep. Now I will interview your bed. And th- then I decided to interview your bed. Because which, then you didn't say anything. And then I decided to interview a sleeping person. And then you I, were just snoring. I should have taken more control of this situation. But, when, you were you were there. You were there thinking it was it was genius. Yeah, you can hear me snickering at you as you go. I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know that. I thought it was funny. I was encouraging you. So silly. So silly. You know, share your cassette tape memories. Oh wow. Or if you have embarrass, embarrassing audio recordings, feel free to share those in order to make us feel better about ourselves. As we close the episode, I will say, I'm happy that we made these kinds of things in 1988, before the internet, because now that we have put it on the internet, we have we have control over the distribution of these cassette tapes. But today's world, you can be a 10 year old and you can somehow get something on YouTube and it's there forever. Well, just think about those crazy videos that Locke and Shepard and Lillian Lincoln came over and made in your house using the photo booth on your iMac. Yeah, they, huh. They're gonna be talking about that stuff you know, 20 years but from I'm now, not putting them on, on their own internet show. We, we, we need to keep them for them to realize how silly they were. You know that crazy laughing? That's exactly how I, how my kids laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard it. Oh, we're so funny. We're so stupid. You know? It, and it was just for each other. We didn't play that for anybody else. It's a good thing. It's a good thing we're not silly anymore. Awkward silence. silence. As if, as if we haven't had enough awkwardness in this episode. Well. Um, we You're supposed to be silent. You keep making noise. Oh, you keep saying things. Like but it awkward makes, silence is just makes it awkward when you say something and you stop. No, it makes it, but it's not silent.